He's got a party going on. Is that cool with you guys? Yo, Tom, I know that there's only one way to end a party. Yo, you I got a nightcap for us, dude. You got a nightcap? You got a party finisher? You want to light this up for us? All right, yeah, I got you. All right. <coughs> oh, Colleen, you got a... You got curfew, right? Yeah. All right, all right. So you got you got to be home. Yeah. You guys want you guys want to go home? You guys tired? All right, all right let's just go home.
focus on the people that we can save. We're going to stabilize these vehicles to make sure that they don't roll anywhere, that they don't get any worse. We're going to stretch a hand line to make sure if they catch on fire, we handle the fire situation. We're going to evaluate which victims need to be treated and transported, and which ones are not stable. Maybe our driver is. Ambulatory stabilization is crucial at this point in our little scenario here. from engine 9, looks like we have six patients. Looks like it's going to be uh, six patients total. Multiple ambulances will be called to the scene. Serious head on collision. Firefighters are going to establish like which vehicle alcohol needs to be at this time taken care of beer first. Bottles at the scene. They're going to get the jaws of life out. And they're going to proceed to cut this the vehicle at this time. in order to gain access to the victim. The driver PD's right on now the scene is already. They're trying to figure out what went down, evaluate what the situation like is. Other people that are Gangs will be coming in to transport. In the car or seeking uh, serious ambulatory care and extraction. We do have a life flight in route. We're not sure if at this point. The jaws of life will be deployed in order to cut the roof off. The windows will be broken. Disabled victims inside will be covered up to protect them. Front windshield will be cut. The rear windows will be blown out. Okay, bangs on the scene. Officer half. The police department's on the scene. We have uh, the, the area isolated. PD will start an investigation the moment they get there. We have officer taking half pictures taking of anything that shows up, right anything now, that's out of the ordinary, EMS anything that can help with the investigation. Ambulatory to the victims. We also going to have massive extrication with people trapped in there. Possible fatality at this point. We have multiple uh, ambulances on the scene. We have the extra portion of it. And you think the fire department takes care of the extrication portion. Bangs and will take care of the patient treatment portion. Okay, massive evidentiary portion of the police department here. Number one, we want to seek safety of lives. But we do have to prosecute and make sure we have evidence, secured evidence, uh, if a crime is present. Apparently there possibly could be some uh, alcohol involvement. Uh, we are seeking out the further investigation. I'm not speaking to the driver. I'm trying to gain further evidence. The victims inside the vehicle will be covered up. They won't be able to see. They'll be there to be protected by the breaking glass while the firefighters cut them out of the vehicle. Okay. At this point in time, we're gonna we're isolating the driver here. Okay, so he's uh, he's gonna get he's gonna check out. Okay. Okay. This is a fatality here. Okay, with that confirmed fatality in uh, one of the vehicles that so we're uh, using that right now. We have extrication uh, in process. The individuals in the SUV are in more serious shape. Firefighters gonna focus their attention on getting them out. Well, well, bangs and ambulance the paramedics other, focus uh, on the people in the vehicle, which are you? Oh. At this time, they're confirming one fatality. One fatality. We have, we have a life flight in route. We have weather conditions today pending, so they are possibly in route, possibly not. Yep. Uh, at this point, the police department has to stand by until extrication is done. We would be conducting further interview. An incident command is called for a helicopter. During traumatic accidents and injuries, we send our patients to trauma centers throughout the region. 
Life net, the gun through the air, Staten on the back, and he called in to land somewhere in the area to take patients to the trauma center. That we bring to bear at a situation like this, you see all the engines, the rescue, the ambulances, the police cars, the personnel, are not available right now. If there's a fire or a car accident or anything else, all of these people are looking for a new situation to help you. Again, just to reiterate. Okay, multiple fatals. We're looking at now more than one. We're looking at. We have to actually see the car victim. Car victim. Before we proceed with the SFSP uh, Center field sobriety testing of our driver. So. Our crash team is calling into this as well, which will uh, determine through accurate diagramming uh, any negligence, uh, uh, scientific principle, the final resting point, free impact. Mad, mass hysteria, but being handled very well. Intermediate Gosh. cooperation is imperative. Being able to uh, make sure that we can save some lives here. Obviously, it's a pretty horrific crash. But uh, we're on hold right now until such time as we can extricate the victims. Then we're going to proceed to our portion of testing to make sure the driver. Yep, yep. All the salvageable victims have been removed from the part of the sedan at this time. The one fatality has been Very nice job by the fire department getting these people out in a very, very reasonable time period. Yep. All the salvageable victims have been removed from the port of the sedan at this time. The one fatality has been left in place to the investigation. How are we doing? Okay, it looks like uh, they'll be winding up here shortly, and then the police department will start their investigation with our driver. Officer Dana Half will be the uh, administrator of the SFST, Standardized Field Sobriety Testing. Uh, he'll put them through a battery of uh, a tests nationwide under National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. These are tests. Landing zone from command, five minutes out. Okay, our landing zone has been established. We have five minutes on the copter. So, getting back to the uh, standardized field sobriety, this is the standardized testing that's done by all police officers nationwide in, uh, in the United States of America. It's called standardized field sobriety testing, SFSTs. Okay, we're looking at a lot of evidentiary, a lot of evidence here, a lot of uh, glass beer bottles, light beer bottles uh, being secured. Uh, Officer Half is collecting evidence. So we have. At this time, LifeNet helicopter has been called out of Seneca Falls. They have a four minute ETA by air to land. Okay, he's taking photographic evidence. Another officer, myself, is standing by the driver here to make sure we have custody of him and nothing is being orally ingested. He's not vomiting. He's going to be checked out and then further evaluated by Officer Half. We treat these situations in two ways, either rescues or recoveries. Recoveries are for fatalities. Rescues are for people that we can save. Right now, the crew is working on a rescue in order to save the victims in that vehicle. By the fire department is Lieutenant Tom Basher. He's doing a fabulous job here, uh, explaining exactly what their purpose is. Okay. Basically, a huge triage portion here. We have multiple victims. Yep. Okay, we should have our uh, firefighters are working we'll right next to the head of the individual in the passenger seat of the SUV in order to get the post cut and not so injure them any further. Give us some, uh, They're removing all the plastic behind the post to make sure that the seatbelt's out of the way, there's no airbags or pretensioners in there, so they can safely cut that post and remove the roof. Okay, just to reiterate what's happened so far, we've had extrication by emergency services, ambulatory services for the victims. We've had evidence collection and marking, photographing by Officer Half. He has assisting officers en route from the crash team, recon team, and maintaining custody in of our driver for further like examination. Spinal injuries are a serious threat. We don't want people to turn, twist, and walk the vehicle 
where they could further injure their spine. So firefighters are going to remove that roof, place backboards in, and bring the victims out straight and clean. Bank ambulance paramedics are working in the back of the rigs right now trying to stabilize the patients that they have. The other ambulance is left to the landing zone. Designed to crumple, like you see. They're designed to protect the people and the passenger, but they get very difficult to cut open. Yep. Firefighters cut the windshield on the front as it's landing in the grass. It doesn't shatter. Firefighters cut the windshield on the front as it's laminated glass and doesn't shatter. They're making the final cuts now with the jaws of life in order to remove the roof. It's going to be removed off the victims. Banks paramedics move in with their backboards, stabilize the patients now that they have access to them. Life net helicopters circling the landing zone up to your left. We're getting ready to come into drop down. We're getting ready to come into drop down on the field. The incident command reports that the saveable victims have been now removed from the vehicles. Guthrie's landing at this time. PD now has the scene of the investigation. Here at the scene, due to the fact we found numerous evidence in beer bottles. 
with all of that, that's going to lead us to the next portion of our investigation. Uh, and after this point in time, we'll proceed with this evaluation and testing through a series of SMST, which is standardized field sobriety testing, is a nationwide test that are conducted by all these officers nationwide in the United States of America. That's why they are nationwide standardized field testing. They are in coordination with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And they are uh, tests that are administered by police officers that have to go through certain training. The let you know what he's doing right now. He's administering an H, G, N, horizontal gaze, and nystagmus. It's one of three tests that we administer here. The first thing that we're looking for in the H, G, N test is tracking of the subject's eyes. He has a stimulus that he's holding in his left hand, which is a pen. He's tracking the pupils of the subject at this time to make sure we have somewhat of a pursuit of the eye tracking the stimulus. Of course, he's been trained to observe several clues which are noted uh, on the internet. You can check on those if you want through SFSTs. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Uh, they will explain everything. I'll do as best I can and keep up with his evaluation. The second test here is the walk and turn test. He has at his availability right now a beautiful yellow line which is straight in nature. So he's not really having the subject go heel to toe other than making a imaginary line. He has one right here in the parking lot which is so noted so he's going to have the individual walk a nine pace heel to toe and on the ninth pace he's going to come back in the opposite, opposite direction. Of course, Officer Half is looking for numerous clues that are also established with this portion of the SFSD testing. He's regarding what he sees in an observation notebook. This is a notebook established for him when it comes to a suppression hearing or any court documentation that might happen in the future. Notes are a very good thing. Talking to your defendant uh, in this condition could also be a very good thing because he's going to give you a lot of fodder that he might not remember in this time of tragedy. So with that, he is making some very good notes and observing what the defendant at this point, subject prior to defendant, is going through in this portion of the walk in turn test. Again, the second testing procedure of the SFST standardized field sobriety test. Hands at your side. Next test is called the one leg stand. It's up to you which leg you decide to stand on. Okay? When you're ready to, pick whichever foot you want up, six inches off the ground. Okay? You're going to count out loud by 1,000, so it's going to look like this. 1,001. Okay, we're still observing now. This is a part three of the SFSD test. The one leg stand. Subject is advised to whatever leg he feels awkward with, raising it six, eight inches in front of him, hands down to his side. While counting out in a series of one 1,000s, two 1,000s, three 1,000s, etc. Again, if you want to see the clues with regards to the SFSD procedures, these are all available on the internet. He is again making certain notes. The observation of the defendant is a very important case. Obviously, we have four fatalities here, and probably one of a magnitude or magnitude of uh, if there's going to be one or a big court case. Very high profile right now. How kid is this time of year? He's going to be doing another test right now, which is going to be an alka sensor test because he has probable cause to believe that there's been ingested alcohol, beer, alcoholic beverages in this crash. And he's going to pre screen the subject to see if there's a measurable BAC, blood alcohol, blood alcohol content. So this is a pre-screen device or an alcohol check, alcohol sensor. This will confirm his 
observations through odoriferous uh, smelling of this, uh, you know, congeners of alcohol beer is to confirm that uh, he has ingested alcohol. This will give a BAC result in a percentage format. So he is prepping the instrument. The subject will go into it. The, the FSST is an instrument that, that uh, when we blow, blow into it, blow into it, into it for a time period, period and then the locks itself out of the sample. It's real simple. simple. You, you prep, prep it, and then it will tell you to blow. These small pieces are hermetically like, sealed. Uh, with the protection of the defendant, and then the evidentiary uh, discussion and suppression hearing. So at this point, as a result, we noted it with the serial number of the FSST pre screening device and any measurable results that he established here at the scene. Okay, at this point, he's formulating his conclusion under common law 11923. Which is a vehicle traffic law, common law under the bag, driving while intoxicated, based upon a police officer's observation and investigation from what he's compiled in his examination. At this point, he is placing the subject under arrest for common law DWI, which is 1192 sub 3 of the vehicle traffic law state of New York. In this manner, at this point in time, based on his conclusive uh, evidence, that he has an affordable cause to arrest under the section. Okay, there's a certain warning that you're allowed allocated here as a citizen and a driver in the state of New York. It's called a DWI warning and Miranda Wright card. After he's placed under arrest, he's uh, issued the DWI warning card, which you will, you will read preface word for word coming off the card, asking, at this point in time, will he submit to a chemical test? He's been, in, he's been placed under arrest for driving while intoxicated. Okay, uh, if he agrees to it, he'll be taken for an independent test. Today's severity of crash will result in a blood test. If he changes his mind on the way up, we will have a uh, DA availability through telephonic means to secure a blood blood seizure warrant because at this point in time the case is serious enough to warrant serious personal injury or fatality. The last warning you receive is his Miranda warning. That's also card read for each officer where he will read the warning and uh, make observations and notes pursuant to how the suspect answers. At this point, you'll make a radio dialogue that the warning and DWI Miranda has read, which will be placed in the radio log notes of the case and dispatcher at uh, 911 Center. He's placed in the car under arrest. He'll be booked, processed, and later arraigned. And his court proceedings have just begun on something that probably could have been very much avoided for some simple fun for him at this point. Okay, so he's uh, Officer Half as of 1095. He's going to be uh, leaving the facility here. And I'm going to turn this over to Lieutenant Thatcher, who's going to advise you of the uh, last portion of our scenario. Lieutenant Thatcher. Methods in Seneca Falls are taking the victim from Bangs Ambulance paramedics, loading them into their helicopter to take them to a regional trauma center. During this event, the paramedics and EMTs from rescue had to decide which people should be treated first. We call that triage. When we only have so many people on hand, we have to decide who needs treatment first and who is not salvageable. Paramedics do that. They call the ambulance. They call the helicopter. And they decide who needs to go and who needs to go where. The patient was loaded into the helicopter. The helicopter is going to pick the best regional trauma center, depending on the weather conditions, 
and what the other conditions are at that trauma center. PD's accident investigation team will be on the scene for quite some time trying to determine the speed of the vehicles, which way they were traveling, and any other circumstances that could have led to this accident. While this is going on, the patients are being transported to the regional trauma centers, and the perpetrator suspect is being processed back at PD. He will then be brought in for a hearing. The helicopter is being loaded right now as we speak. Victims in the helicopter. They're going to secure it up and take it off. Okay, since we have here now, we have the extricated victims that are still alive being air vacuumed out. Up like this is not uncommon. Lieutenant Basher is observing furthermore of what's going to happen to we our defendant now when he comes come back to another accident for his judicial you, sentencing on a convicted like guilty. This. By a jury, we do it far he's going often. to state time, and be the sentencing smart. will be established by the judge uh, slow. in the concluding scenario portion drive. of our do not distract each other while of our Mach EWI crash. We're moving around in 4,000 pound tanks that can do serious damage in the blink of an eye. Do not make a brief, poor decision that will affect the rest of your life or perhaps take away someone else's life. The amount of time and resources, manpower, and personnel that go into something like this is really draining. It's important for you to realize how many people are here to protect you if something like this happens, but we'd much rather have this never happen at all. time period having that flyover. Officer Hatt's going to bring our uh, defendant now, which has been sentenced, or actually been convicted of his crime. He's coming before a judge to be sentenced. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. So at this point in time, we have the DA, we'll have the judge, we have a uh, defense attorney. The individual will be placed in front. The individual will be placed in front, and at this point, the judge will come in, they'll make a sentencing, and then uh, this defense, uh, defendant is going away for a very long time. He'll be seated next to the defense, which is the attorney.
a little bit shocky. He should be because he's a young man. He's going away for a very long time. He got a free attorney because his parents don't want to be sued, so they've disowned him. <laughs> Not much. You, Go ahead, Your Honor. Do you have one of you need to proceed when you're ready? Thank you, Judge. Uh, the next case before the court is Peter versus Jesse Wallace, who was scheduled this afternoon for sentencing. Uh, Mr. Wallace who was convicted of three counts of vehicular manslaughter in the first degree, three counts of vehicular assault in the first degree as well. After a jury came back with a verdict, Judge, it's been approximately eight months since the night of this incident. Judge, we've outlined in our pre sentencing memorandum what our position is on this case. We believe that Mr. Wallace should be sentenced to a term of five years to 15 years in prison. Uh, we've outlined those reasons why in our pre-sentence memorandum. But Judge, the DA's office has had a chance to meet each of the families of the victims in this case. There, as you know, three young adults who were killed. There was another young adult who was paralyzed, and two more that were seriously injured. We don't believe that Mr. Wallace intended to do this on that night, but he is not here today to determine whether he's a good person, whether his time throughout his life has been well spent. We are here today to determine what the consequences for his decisions on the night of May 22nd, 2014 should be. Judge, when you combine all of the pain and suffering and the heartbreak of each of those individuals, the people that are dead, the families of the injured, the families of the dead, you cannot account for all the time that has been lost for each of those individuals. When you calculate all the suffering and the heartbreak, the decades and decades that each of those families will be without their loved ones, their friends will be without their loved ones, sentencing Mr. Wallace here today to a term of five years to 15 years in prison is the only reasonable and fair sentence in this case. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Huddle, would you like to be heard? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, my client, Jesse Wallace, understands that his actions have caused a lot of pain and suffering for families. Up until May, up until May 22nd, 2014, my client, Jesse, has led an exemplary life. He was a great son, great friend, deceased, great student. He understands that he's here for his punishment. I've had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with this young man. Through many discussions, I feel, we feel, that he could be a positive member to this community again. We know that uh, today is sentencing day. Uh, his actions truly were a mistake, and he knows that. Uh, today we do ask you to be lenient with his sentence um, and allow him to get back into the community and be a positive member of his community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huddle. Uh, Mr. Wallace, this is your opportunity to make a statement. Would you like to be heard? I'm just really sorry um, to everyone, um, the families, families of my friends, and everyone else. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Wallace, this is the most difficult kind of case for a judge. Although I take no pleasure sentencing anybody to state prison, it is particularly distressing to sentence a defendant who is a young man in the prime of his life. But you are not the only person that I have to consider here. And ultimately, you are the person responsible for what happened on May 22nd, 2014. Mr. Wallace, you could have made so many other choices that night. You could have stayed overnight at the party. You could have called a cab. You could have called a parent or a sober friend 
to give you and your friends a ride home. Or you could have chosen ahead of time a designated driver who would not drink any alcohol that night. But instead, your decision to drink alcohol and to then get behind the wheel of a 3,000 pound vehicle is what led to this disaster that will haunt you for the rest of your life. I'm sure you thought, this has never happened to you. But the truth is, it happens every day to people just like you who thought this could never happen. Every 60 minutes in the United States, someone dies as a result of a drunk driving crash. Every hour, another life lost. The damage you have caused is irreversible. Two people were seriously injured. One was permanently paralyzed and will never walk again. And three young adults are dead and nothing can bring them back. The saddest part of this tragedy is that it was 100% preventable. The sentence of the court is the following. On the charges of vehicular manslaughter in the first degree, and vehicular assault in the first degree, you are sentenced to a minimum of five years and a maximum of 15 years in state prison. Good luck, Mr. Wallace. Well, that is a humbling way to end a night of fun. The media video that you uh, viewed earlier was uh, very well done. And I'm not sure many other uh, school districts do it that way. But uh, to get the point across to all you young people, that's the best way that we chose this year. So with that, I want to say thank you for uh, coming out and seeing this. And hopefully our point has been made I want to thank the uh, Ithaca City School District for hosting this. I want to thank the Ithaca Fire Department, Bangs Ambulance, all the independent photographers that are out here, school media, and of course the personnel from my department, Ithaca Police Department. Be responsible people, have a good prom this year, and just if you had one thing in your mind, reflect on what we tried to uh, show you this afternoon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.